Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'm of course very, very happy to be here tonight and, and, and make this uh, short uh, talk tonight. Uh, and I was planning on starting, should I say, on the benefit side of the equation, because I think that is, is uh, an aspect that is becoming increasingly important as we, as we progress. And you know, this morning when I when I went to office, I. I came in this lunchtime this day, so I went to, to my office in Stockholm, and then I, I listened to the radio, uh, and there was this uh, guy that was telling me about the traffic. Uh, you probably have that in all, all major cities, they report a bit by the QSR, and maybe some accident or incident, etc. And they get their information from people calling in and, and giving reports, and they get it from the police directly or from the transportation department, and then they send it out on the radio. And I think most people think that's quite a useful thing. But it doesn't really help. It doesn't really improve the way which you get to work because you're already in the mess when you get to know about it. And in parallel with this, I think that in the last, I don't know, five years or so, we have actually implemented a, a, a very sophisticated piece of infrastructure. We have implemented sensors that can, in, in enough amount of cars, that can capture the direction and speed and acceleration and velocity of the, of the speeds. Enough to be able to feed that back into a server to be able to create a very accurate real-time uh, situation or the picturing about the traffic situation in the entire city. Uh, and I think that, that we also have the, then the capability to transmit it back to the drivers or the, or the, or the people in this, running around in the city in a graphical, very efficient way uh, and with add-on information. Uh, and I think that's something which, just as I said, just five years ago probably would have been seen more or less as a science fiction thing. But now it's, it's a reality. And if we add then the capability to, to uh, prompt for an address and get a very accurate uh, driver's uh, uh, guidance going there with a very accurate timing on when you will arrive, I actually had experience in Stockholm of, of getting directed in a completely, for me, unknown way, arriving at the place at exactly the same time that was, was prompted to me. Much better than I would have gone if I had gone my, my, my personal way. And Stockholm is not that big, believe me. Uh, and add also to this then the social capabilities of being able to hint ourselves between sort of the, the, the collaboration environment to, to hint ourselves, uh, to be able to highlight that there is a police standing somewhere or there is an incident or something. So there is a sort of a sharing experience into this. And as you probably all know, what I'm describing here is, is a standard navigation service, more or less. I'm thinking about Waze, which is the one that I'm using, which was, was started back in 2009 by a couple of Israelis, uh, and, and uh, which was actually lost, lost summer. It was acquired by, by Google at the price of 1.3 billion US dollars. I think they had a total of 80 million uh, as a funding capital. Uh, raised over the couple of years that they were, they were operating. There were 110 people working in, in that company. And I think that's, that's a very strong illustration of, of first of all, the, the benefit that you can create for people in the streets and, and the benefits of broadband, mobility, cloud, software, analysis, and, and, and algorithms. But I think it's also a good illustration of, of how ICT enable innovation to happen and enable entrepreneurship to happen. Because I think the cost of setting up such an operation is dramatically cut by the, the efficient tools that you can access and the market that you can reach, which I think in this case is maybe the most important aspect. And if we stress this or stretch this thinking then into sensors, maybe on our bodies, uh, sensing biometric data and, and into the wealth of uh, healthcare or wellness applications that we see, or we see this development going into other, other parts of, of society, I think that we are up for a, a phenomenal uptake of, of various kinds of new ways of solving uh, classic uh, problems then, or, or solving satisfying needs in a completely new and much more dynamic and, and, and efficient way. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean, what happened to the guys in the radio? They're still there. I think they will be there tomorrow as well. But, but give it a couple of days and probably we won't hear them anymore in the radio. So they will basically disappear. They will get out of, of job in that sense. I don't think that there will be a big uprise uh, for a couple of, of radio reporters. But when we, if we continue on the, tra on the transportation area, when we link in uh, self-driving cars 
which is yet another science fiction-ish kind of thing which is happening as we speak, and we all know that as well. And we think of self-driving cars being implemented not as another feature on a private car, but implemented as a shared resource. I listened to, to, to Robin Chase, who is one of the sort of pioneers in, in, in car sharing. She talked about calculations being made, talk, identifying a possible reduction of the car fleet in a given major city by up to 90% if it's implemented as, as a shared resource. And I think when you start to look at those benefits in resource efficiency, obviously the conflict, the potential conflict between drivers and the development towards self-driving cars is something that is, is maybe not so obvious how we should do. I believe that, that we have to go the, the, the way of making it into a shared resource. And then we need to take maybe a bit of short-term conflict. And I think that's one of, the, of my messages here, that I think that we, this initiative of looking into 2030 is, is so important for us to, to create a framework, creative thinking, which will not be right. We will not be able today to describe the world in 2030, but we will be able to stress, stress our thinking to maybe take the right conflicts and make the right policy decisions going forward. And if I bring this back in then to, to the aspect of, of uh, uh, importance for Europe, I think that first of all, of course, the, the creating the innovation environment and creating the environment for entrepreneurship and, and to make this, this uh, wealth of different uh, development in, in basically all areas of society is something which is extremely important. But I think also from an infrastructure point of view, if I go back to, to something which is closer to the core business of Ericsson, I think that it's also important to recognize the the, the, the importance to have a harmonized infrastructure, to have an infrastructure which is to the highest possible degree shared between those industries. When we speak to the car industry, when we speak to the utility industry, when we speak to the healthcare industry, it always starts with very specific requirements and very specific technology that needs to be implemented in all of these areas. But when we come out of that discussion, or often a year or two after, we, we many times end up in, in being able to meet on a common, much more of a common and horizontal thinking. So I think that if, if Europe should sort of maintain or, or strengthen its leadership, it needs to look both at the sort of the benefit, the, the, the conditions for creating benefits, as well as the conditions to create more of a harmonized shared infrastructure that, that can be utilized across many, many several industries. And along with that comes also the, the sort of natural resources in terms of spectrum and, and, and what have we that sort of makes, makes room for this common infrastructure. So I think that was uh, my, my very brief uh, perspective on, on, on how we see the future. And I think the balance, as I said, of, of, of benefit and, and then the, the platform on which that benefit is created is something that, that hopefully could characterize Europe as being a leader also in the future. Thank you.